on episode 87, we had a great chat with Anastasia from Russia and we talked about various topics, for example, about linguistics, about Stephen Krashen's book called Language Acquisition, about how she teaches English and German online, and she also gave some recommendations which podcasts, YouTube channels and the like she fancies. And of course, there are many more topics. And just so you know, this is again part of the Brave 85 series. So buckle up, have fun. So my name is Nastya. This is my short name. The full version will be Anastasia. And I guess this name is quite popular, not only in my language. So I'm 21 years old. I'm studying at the university. I'm going to get a bachelor degree this year. Yeah, I'm graduating this year. And uh, I study linguistics. And uh, also as a branch, not as a branch of linguistics, but in my university, we have um, two departments, teaching English, teaching foreign languages and cultures and interpreting. So I chose the first one. And uh, obviously, because I wanted to participate in Whisper Lab. Perfect. Okay, good. So, yes. yeah, obviously, um, the reason why I wanted to participate in Whisper Lab is that I wanted to share something that I know, yeah, and get some feedback as a young teacher of English and German a little bit. Yeah, and my second language that I learned is German. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that's a pure coincidence i mean that's a uh, good coincidence i would say that you're a german speaker right yeah exactly. uh, that's really nice and uh, why did you choose german it's closely connected to my brother because the first influence of german i experienced from my brother because he uh, studied this language at his university mm. yeah but he forgot this because Practice is everything. Yeah. If you don't practice something, eventually yes. <laughs> you will forget whatever it is. And uh, language is not an exception in this case. I remember he, he used some books for language learning and I still have them. And uh, yeah, while I was looking through these books, I kind of became interested in that. And also the music, German music, some rock music. Yeah. That is something that I like. So, and uh, yeah, when I finished school, I decided to, I was also interested in English. So I decided to learn German as well as the second language. Yeah. <laughs> that is wonderful. So you have been studying linguistics for four years now. And could you explain to us in a few sentences, what does linguistics mean? Well, it's kind of hard to explain in few sentences such a big <laughs> topic yeah such a um, big subject as linguistics because it it contains everything i can give you a formal explanation of linguistics like a system of symbols yeah that has certain rules uh, and layers such as grammar phonetics lexicology all of them compromise the language well, but I think you would be more interested if I gave you a definition that I like, yeah, my own perspective about language. Yeah. Uh, I would say that language is a phenomenon that is really defined by culture, yeah, and mindset of people. I would say like... Okay, great. So next year you'll graduate and you will write about grammar... So what's the title of your essay or your diploma and what's it all about? Uh, well, I was searching for something that has never, that hasn't been researched yet thoroughly. Yeah. And I, I eventually made my choice and decided to write something about grammar and uh, my supervisor about my thesis. Yeah. She helped me a lot saying that. There is a, me a method called micro learning. Yeah. And uh, if I can combine gra teaching grammar and micro learning together, 
that would be really something relevant and new. And I just started searching about that. And I really discovered that micro learning, although it was, it was discovered in 20th century by Skinner, yeah, a psychologist, American psychologist Skinner, still it's quite new teaching grammar. Okay. Yeah. And also students experience a lot of problems in uh, grammar. Yeah. <laughs> when micro teaching, what is this exactly? Mm-hmm. Is it to, to learn in small steps or? Kind of like that. What yeah. Is- it's pretty, pretty close. It, it is learning something, not ex- just everything. Yeah. In small chunks and um, at the time that you prefer, that a person prefers in convenient environment, just small small chunks, uh, small bits of information. But the one peculiarity of this approach is learning every day. Every day, small chunks makes progress. Yeah. Okay. That sounds really interesting to me. So let's move on to the question. You have read the book about language acquisition by Stephen Krashen. Why did you pick exactly that book to read? That was a coincidence uh, for me because I was uh, looking something on YouTube related to language. Sometimes I love watching uh, experiences of other people who learn languages uh, about their success, their methods and techniques and imply these techniques in in my language learning. So while I was doing that, there was a short video where the YouTuber provided a link to the book. He said something about Stephen Krashen. And Mm. I guess that wasn't the first time I heard about Stephen Krashen, but I didn't read any of his books yet. And I decided to read about language acquisition because I had known about acquisition before, uh, I mean, the, the meaning of acquisition. And here is the most interesting part. I have a friend who is an inter- interpreter, yeah, a translator, and uh, we decided to set a challenge for us. Uh, we decided to read the same book, Stephen Krashen's uh, Language Acquisition, and then share our experience about that. Yeah, and uh, both of us were so uh, deep into this book, and um, we learned a lot from that. And uh, I guess that that is the best book I've ever read about language. I mean, okay. this kind of academic book. Yeah. You also mentioned the challenge that you were doing with your friend. So was it a challenge to improve your English skills or... Um, or what was it exactly? Um, this challenge is about uh, two things. Yeah, reading, because I must admit, I don't read uh, a lot. Although I want to read, but I keep delaying and uh, feeling lazy about uh, reading something, <laughs> at, at, at least to the end. That's why we decided to um, Mm, set up this challenge to read something and because since this book is written in English it's also yeah obviously this is the great opportunity to improve the language and why is it a challenge it's because she knows yeah my friend she knew that I was reading it and I knew that she was yeah. reading it and it's oh, sort of it. commitment it's a great plan yeah. <laughs> yeah so obviously the book is about language acquisition But maybe could you give us a short summary or tell us what's it all about? Maybe the specifics or why did you like it that much? What Uh, makes it so special? um, There were certain things that I was surprised to learn that these things really exist and it was proven by experiments. So, for example, one thing that surprised me a lot was the fact that even if you go to a target language country, let's say uh, a person learns English and he or she moves to the United States or any other English-speaking country, if you, if you don't overcome your fears of talking to other people, somehow interacting with English-speaking world, 
even if you are in the target language country, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will succeed in learning language. And Stephen Krashen provides a lot of examples proving that fact, that people lived, yeah, some people lived in the United States. He provided an example, yeah, about United States. They lived there for quite a long time, but still either uh, remained, uh, either had the same level and didn't improve or just didn't succeed at all. I didn't expect to, uh, that such things are possible. Yeah. And then he gave the solution, yeah. how we uh -huh. should learn. Yeah, basically the acquisition is, uh, he provides hypothesis about acquisition that are opposite to um, learning language. So it's when you learn naturally like a child would learn uh, the first language. Yeah, language L1, yeah. So when you just uh, watch something, but the speech must be uh, rather primitive simplified speech when you listen to something or learn yeah. something and uh, it, nobody forces you to speak as it happens in the classroom because really in classrooms I rem remember my first time in the first course at my university I was forced to speak and yeah I experienced a lot of fear especially speaking in English in front of the class uh, giving presentations in English that was I was so stressed yes. out. Yeah. <laughs> the same here. I was always afraid of speaking up because I was afraid of making mistakes. And that's not a good environment to improve our language skills, of course. <laughs> yeah. And Stephen Krashen says that mistakes. Yeah. One interesting thing about grammar mistakes. That was something that turned everything I knew upside down, really, because um, he described uh, a conversation, not a conversation, another experiment with, I guess it's not good to say, uh, to call it an experiment, yeah? One interesting example. Case. Yeah, case, yeah, a case with a woman who reached a uh, proficiency level in, in English, but still, when she, when she spoke, sometimes she made a mistake that um, a language learner can make on a basic level, just at the beginning. Yes, I see. And that was something that uh, seems... Strange. Yeah, rather weird. <laughs> like Yeah, weird. If you're so proficient, that's how come you can make such mistakes? Mm. But uh, that's absolutely natural and it, it happens all the time. That's why we shouldn't be okay. afraid of that. And of course, I make mistakes and I correct myself constantly. But one thing that Tim Krashen uh, highlights is that if you correct yourself too much, yeah, if your grammar correction overcomes, yeah, you get you, stuck. Yeah, you, yeah. You're, you're definitely stuck, and there is no way you can reach the fluency. Yeah, that's the main problem. Okay, and. What methods does he recommend to become fluent? Yeah, reading this book, I realized that uh, the main methods, the main advice is not to force yourself, not to push yourself and somehow relax because language learning has uh, a lot of things to do. Um, I mean, it really coincides with our psychology. Because uh, if a person is stressed out and the level of anxiety is pretty high, that's when you can utter even a word. Yeah. That's why there is another uh, YouTuber and uh, rather prominent polyglot called Steve Kaufman. He uses himself methods uh, that Stephen Krashen advised. Okay. And this is just one important thing. Relax, find your way that you enjoy. Enjoyment is everything. Having fun is the most important thing in learning. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I heard about a technique that we can just learn by, by listening a lot, a lot of content and that we, in a way, automatically can learn a lot of things because the brain is, is still working and processing all the information. I don't know exactly if it was Stephen Krashen who said that. 
but I like that also because of uh, Luke's English podcast. So yeah, yeah. you can listen to him even more. So. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the cool fact about this approach is that you're relaxed. It seems like you don't even mm. learn something because I must admit, uh, most people think that learning is, is hard work, but sometimes it's not at all. It's not the case that yeah. learning is hard. So, yeah, um, basically that was, uh, that was the turning point when I decided to listen to podcasts, a lot of them. And uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I listen to something and meet a lot of new words, sometimes I don't even look up for a definition because I want to remain in this comfortable. To enjoy, yeah, yes, just to enjoy, enjoy the, yeah. the listening. Yeah, it's, it's the same here. Because if I can understand the story, then there is no reason to stop and to look something up. I mean, sometimes I do, but yeah. it definitely breaks the flow, which is no good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So would you recommend this book to every learner? I would even say that this book is absolutely mandatory for reading if you, if you want to teach language. Because one thing uh, that I discovered from this book was sometimes uh, learning, I know some people uh, don't like it, especially if you're a teacher. But that fact made me kind of disappointed, I must say, that Stephen Krashen claims that sometimes learning language in the classroom is pretty much, let's face this fact, a waste of time. <laughs> yeah, but if we use some techniques of this language acquisition, that's when it works. If you don't have another source of, if you don't expose, if a person is not exposed to communicating with other people, for example, in a target language country, that's when classroom is not a waste <laughs> of time at all. But because of the, our education system, yeah, again, that we are forced uh, to speak Sometimes early, yeah, our anxiety level is rather high. This constant learning of grammar, but not enough comprehension, that leads to poor results in language learning. Yeah, it, it destroys our understanding of, um, it, it just destroys um, how people think about uh, language learning. Because after school, I've been learning English for more than 11 years but only at university i guess i realized how fun can it be when i was at school um it I, was I can't, a struggle yeah it was a constant struggle mm. yeah we were struggling at all with grammar with speaking with basically everything i guess it's only the pro problem of approach at schools yeah 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 definitely i really like what you have told us and I think I absolutely need to have a look at that book. My question is, but is it not too technical? It's an academic book, I must say, <laughs> yeah. But okay. it's not that hard to read it at all. It's not hard because it's full of examples, real-life examples. And um, if a person wants to go deeper a little bit to uh, improve language learning, And if you're a teacher in teaching, that's that's the great book to Yeah, okay. Great. Let's move to the next topic. If this is all right for you, or do you want to add something to Stephen Krashen's book? Of course, I can discuss this book for forever, basically. But <laughs> I think we yeah, we can move to another topic. Okay. So you are a teacher and I wanted to ask you, so what topics do you teach and to whom? So I'm a young teacher. Yeah, I've started uh, teaching English almost a year ago. I, I work at online school and there I teach adults. The youngest adult that I, that I teach is only 26 years old. Yeah, and the... Old one is 57, so it's a 
great gap, uh, this uh, age gap that I have with my students, but it's fun, I must say, too. It's fun to adjust to every learner, every student that I have. But yeah, I must say it's really fun. And m- most of my uh, adult students are either beginners or elementary students. And some people might think that's even better if you have a uh, solid, yeah, decent level of English. You can easily teach people who are beginners who don't know anything, yeah, total, complete beginners. Well, I must admit it's quite hard to adjust your speech to beginner level. Yeah. And I also have one student who's only nine years old. She's a girl. She goes to school. And yeah, here I struggle a lot too because she's a child and I need... So is it always a one-to-one online lesson? Yeah, it's a tutoring one-to-one lesson for one hour. And is it at the school or is it a, a platform online platform all my adult students i i teach at school an online school that i work in and uh, my youngest student i teach j- just online by myself it's like my my own job i mean yeah okay to tutoring yeah like tutoring yeah i also taught one girl of my age and i taught her german that was yeah that was pretty hard even harder because my german is not <laughs> that good as english yeah and what is your experience teaching online during the pandemic was it difficult or is it difficult well i guess in this case the question is it's absolutely the same no differences uh, at all because i started <laughs> yeah I started yeah. teaching online before pandemic. Yeah, I had started before pandemic began. And uh, since it was always online and now, yeah, it's online. Yeah, Everything okay. remained the same. But one advantage of pandemic in this case, if it can have any advantages, yeah, is that this is just a new topic to uh, discuss with my students. And it's always relevant. You mean that you have a, a topic that you can discuss? Yeah, yeah. I mean, to... mm-hmm, mm-hmm, because they all work and uh, none of them has ever worked online. So that's why for them mm. it's a new experience. So when I ask something about um, their personal life, yeah, pandemic is one of the relevant topics to discuss with them. Yeah, sure, sure. So and now comes a question that is great, mm-hmm. <laughs> I suppose. What are some culture shocks you experienced while teaching online? <laughs> <laughs> well, culture shocks teaching online. Here, I think I need to ask you if I understand this question correctly. Because there are culture shocks if we don't talk about people from different cultures. It's not necessarily... uh, A person can experience culture shocks not being involved into other cultures, right? So Um, what kind of culture shocks are you talking about? Because, I mean, I I listened to to your audience something like that you want to tell about the culture shocks. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. But I meant here culture shocks that I had not in teaching English. Yeah, but my experience in talking to other people all over the world online, first of all, and also when I met some of them in person. Okay, you mean the differences between the two countries? Yeah, absolutely. For example... One uh, one rather popular example, at least in in English classrooms in Russia, a lot of students know about that. Is for example the way Russians build polite requests, yeah, and how it differs greatly from English way of building polite requests. That's why uh, I guess that's the main reason why Russian speakers seem kind of rude and direct in English speaking uh, countries yeah when people yeah, yeah. yeah when communicate with I English see. speakers yeah because every country or every culture communicates in a different way yeah and uh, i realize it requires a lot of knowledge about different cultures 
to communicate effectively with others. Because sometimes I don't really understand what person implies mm. only because of this cultural differences that we all have be between us. I guess that makes it also very difficult to be a translator because you, you can't translate uh, literally one-to-one from one language to another because there are cultural differences. Exactly. It makes it really difficult. Yeah, I yeah. translated yeah. Uh, myself uh, several times in my life. I had to translate. And uh, of course, I lack a lot of theoretical knowledge about that and practice as well. But it was so hard for me to do, do it uh, so two people could feel that they, they have the contact, they have common ground. So culture has a lot to do with language and language closely related to that they both influence each other yes Mm -hmm. yes i absolutely agree with you (laughs) that was really great maybe you could give us also your recommendations of podcasts or youtube channels sure if there is any that comes to mind right now sure uh actually i've prepared uh, my list of Uh, favorite and really effective podcasts for learning English in advance. Yeah. So no matter what kind of platform you use, you can, I guess, find yes. them easily. So my advice will be for any language learners is to expose yourself to different accents, to listen to uh, not only English, like British English, Like, for example, Luke's English podcast, there is another one, Adapt English podcast with Hilary Hilary Pratt is the host of this podcast, uh, as far as I remember. I'm also going to include a bit of neuroscience, as I know many of you like that too. So there is evidence from neuroscience that learning a second language, or a third, or a fourth, means changes in the brain. So the left half of the brain, the left hemisphere of the brain, is seen as the part which deals with speech and language. So this is, of course, the side which grows more connections when you learn a language. And in particular, there are areas of the brain which understand language and areas which are used when you speak. So Wernicke's area is associated with understanding and Broca's area is associated with speaking. Yeah, the great thing to do will be, could be also to listen to American English. For example, All Ears English, one of my favorite. And yeah. there's a Canadian accent in Culips English podcast. <laughs> All right, let's get into our main topic of conversation for today, which is internet privacy. And Cassie, the reason why I wanted to talk about this today is that there is a big controversy brewing over a popular app called TikTok. I'm talking about this new social media app. And so have you ever heard of TikTok before? Well, of course I've heard of TikTok, but I do not use it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and guys there in this podcast discuss um, some bilingual things about learning languages. It's also really exciting to listen to. And if you're a fan of short, uh, relatively short podcasts, five minutes or so, I would recommend you listen to Words and Their Stories by VOA Learning English. And it's super cool if you are um, interested in history of words. One of my uh, favorites here, Words and Their Stories. This is the name of this podcast. Today, we will talk about how to describe something that shows promise of being great, but then turns out to be not so great. We can call this a flash in the pan. And espresso English is also quite uh, fun. And one one thing, yeah, just a quick podcast. 
I mean, not quick podcast. This podcast is uh, for those who are, who love listening to long podcasts such as mm -hmm. Luke's English, yeah. It is called Something You Should Know. It's about everything. Science, history, success, uh, just everything. And here you can find, you can listen to American English. Yeah. And Rock and Roll English. Oh, that one is also great. Yeah, also <laughs> one of my yeah. favorites as well. This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnson. Hello, rock and rollers, and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English, episode number 214, baby. Oh, yeah. And if you're a German learner, just like me, you can listen to and watch on YouTube Easy German. Yeah, yeah, Easy German is one of the best. They have podcasts, but it's kind of hard to listen to podcasts because it requires at least upper intermediate level of German, I guess. Do you have any more recommendations? I guess the main message that I want to say today is just find your own way because all of these techniques, there are so many ways to learn uh, language. All of them work for sure. Luca Camparello, I guess it's another cool YouTuber that you can find on that yeah. platform. He's a po polyglot. Yeah, he's a polyglot. Um, there are many others who who learned language differently. Yeah, For example, using the kind of like old-fashioned way grammar translation method. But it works for them. So just find your own way that works for you. And everything will be will be just fine with uh, language learning. The main thing is just enjoy, just to enjoy, yeah. Do it regularly, yeah. When I don't um, listen to podcasts every day, yeah, I feel like uh, it's not good for my language development. That's why doing something uh, regularly, this is the key to success. I guess okay. common truth, <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for all those tips. And I think... This is an excellent way to wrap this episode up. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you very much for your time and, and your um, stories. Maybe if you want to say something else. Uh, wow. So first of all, I want to thank you for having me for this interview. That, that was <laughs> just uh, a lot of fun to talk about these topics. And I guess I would say that I, I hope another time Luke and you and any other people who are devoted into podcasting will do something like that and will interview other people as well because each stories are really interesting because they're personal. Yeah, so... Exactly, yes. I conducted four interviews so far of the 85 who participated and who didn't make it to the next round. So my mission is to, to make more interviews and to share it with the world. That's the great way. Yeah. To, uh, I mean, the great thing that you do to interview others. I hope you also have a lot of fun talking to different people and uh, learn something new. It is, yes, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. <laughs> great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you too, Daniel. It was really great to talk to you about that. Yes. Yeah, goodbye. Thank you. Bye. was my dog. Ah, yes. <laughs> okay. I wish you all the best, Natasha. No, Natasha. Ana Anastasia. Yeah. <laughs> it okay. is difficult for me to pronounce. I'm sorry. It's okay. No worries. It's, it's okay.
did you listen to Luke's feedback to your audio message that you have sent in for the competition? I'm afraid I didn't. He made a, a video with all of the 85 entries and he commented on every single one. And ah. with your audio message, he said something like, oh yes, Stephen Crescent's book about language ah. acquisition. And I, I think he, he knew the book. Okay. Nastia, Anastasia, uh, nice to hear from you. Yes, Stephen Krashen's book about language acquisition. Very interesting stuff. Oh, I feel bad about sort of everyone going, oh, I'm so glad for this opportunity. And then I'm just, they, I'm stealing opportunities. So many stolen opportunities and, and broken dreams. Then he said again that it is not possible to interview everyone. Yeah, unfortunately. You know? <laughs> no time and so many people yeah. listen to him and all of them. Uh, have their mm -hmm. own unique stories. Yeah.